through this handout that I usually give people if you have done a session of yoga therapy with me or even if you've seen me for occupational therapy. This is a handout of breathing exercises that I very frequently will give people that I'm working with as a foundation for some of the basic patterns that we practice to become aware of our breath and to start to really understand the strong connection between the way that we're breathing and the way that our nervous system feels. Our breath is a really unique tool in the fact that the way that we're breathing communicates information to our nervous system. It can tell our nervous system that we need to really be alert and we need to prepare for some sort of um, a challenge or an emergency or we can use our breath to tell our nervous system that everything is okay, you can calm down, we don't need to be nervous or on edge right now. And a lot of times what will happen is the nervous system gets stuck in that fight, flight, or freeze response where you feel that chronic tension. So the most valuable tool that we have is breathing. It's completely free. Um, you don't need a prescription and you need very little training to be able to learn how to use your breath to calm your nervous system down. So the first thing, number one on the list of breathing exercises is just being aware of your breath. And this is something that you wanna practice a few different times during the day. Um, you wanna, every once in a while when you think about it, you want to check in with yourself and say in your mind, how am I breathing right now? Where am I moving? Is it my chest? Is it my belly? Is it my rib cage? Is my breath short or is it long? Is my inhale lasting longer or is my exhale lasting longer? So this awareness is just a process of gathering information. What is going on right now with my breath? We're not starting to change anything. We don't wanna judge like, oh, man, I was holding my breath again because you can start to get a little bit aggravated with yourself sometimes when you catch yourself in those habitual patterns. So I want you to try to suspend that judgment just for this portion to gather information without adding any aggravation to the process. It's just noticing right now. So then once you notice what's going on, you can say, well, I tend to really hold a lot of tension in my shoulders and I wanna to try to work on settling that down and deepening my breath. So the next breath that's on here is the pursed lip breath. And this is just a process of breathing in through the nose if you can, and then exhaling out through the mouth like you're blowing out candles. The idea is that when you are exhaling, you're engaging your muscles and creating pressure behind the breath. So it goes like this, in through the nose. Blow out through the mouth. Use your muscles to create that upward pressure so that if there were a lot of candles in front of you and you were trying to blow them all out, you would have enough force behind your breath to do that. So you do a few rounds of breath like that. In through the nose. Blow out through the mouth. And if you're just starting to practice breathing exercises, you only want to do three or four at a time, and then come back to a normal breath pattern. If you start to feel lightheaded or dizzy or kind of odd in any way, that's your signal that you come back to a normal breath pattern, give yourself a break. It takes a while for your body to get used to changing the regulation of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood. So sometimes it can result in feeling a little bit odd and then you just take a break. So then we'll go down to the next one, which is belly breathing, trying to make sure that we're pulling the breath down with the diaphragm. And really this is 
the muscle of breathing. The diaphragm is the muscle that initiates the breath, but we want to make sure that we're not holding the breath up high in the chest by itself, because sometimes that can make us feel anxious. So the way that we direct the breath down into the belly is we place the hand right over the upper part of the belly. So where I'm going is my rib cage is about here. There's a little notch up in the middle of the rib cage, and then I'm going to put my hand right on that space because that's right underneath where the rib cage ends and the diaphragm is tucked right up into there. So that's where we want movement. As I inhale, I'm going to think about pulling the air right underneath my hand, try to fill up that space. And then I'm going to keep my exhale through the nose. As I exhale, I'm pulling back with the muscles so that space underneath my hand empties. Breathing into the belly and breathing out. And sometimes I'll say the phrase, inhale, inflate, exhale, deflate. Let your hand rest down, come back to a normal breath. In that process of coming back into your normal breath, without manipulating the way that you're breathing or where your breath is going, I just want you to pay attention to the top of your inhale, so when your lungs are all the way full, and the bottom of your exhale, meaning when your lungs are completely empty, there's no air. I want you to try to round out those transitions. So this is the next one on the paper. Number four, it's called a circular breath. The circular breath is like if we smoothed out all the edges and made very, very seamless transition from inhale to exhale, very little pause. So just watch your breath and see if you can smooth out the edges. You might notice that the transition from either the inhale to the exhale or from the exhale to the inhale is a little bit sharper, like you feel like you get stuck there. And if that happens, just notice it. And then the next time you go through that transition, see if you can make it smoother. No pause during that transition. Okay, the next one, we're going to direct our breath to the sides of the body. This is a lateral breath, and we're using the rib cage. The rib cage being the other area where the muscles are specifically made to change the shape of the lungs. And in changing the shape of the lungs, when it expands, it creates a vacuum to draw air in. When the rib cage contracts, it's creating pressure to push the air out to clear space for the next inhale. So that's what those muscles are designed to do. The diaphragm, the muscles of the rib cage, they're made to change the shape of the lungs to either draw the air in or push the air out. The lungs themselves have no ability to actually pull air in or move air out. They have no muscle to contract and relax. So it relies on the surrounding structures. So we're going to take the hands out to the sides, wherever is comfortable for your shoulders, and I create this kind of a horseshoe with my hands and then cup it around the sides of my rib cage. So in creating this shape, when I'm inhaling, I'm trying to create pressure out to the sides into my hands. Like I'm making my body wider from side to side. And then exhale, pull the sides in. And I'm kind of trying to exaggerate this so that you can see it. Inhale, expand to the sides. Exhale, contract the ribs together. One more like that. When you're doing that exercise, you're just thinking about the sides. Expand and contract. And in that, 
the ribs are expanding open and then pulling together, helping to change the overall volume of air that the lungs are able to take in and then they're able to press out. The complete exhale is so important because if we don't exhale completely, there are pockets of stale air that are left in there. We've already taken the oxygen out. There's nothing else that we need from it. It's just taking up space unless we get really effective at exhaling and getting all of that out. The exhale is also super important for being able to let go of carbon dioxide. Not too much, not too little. It's a delicate balance. We need carbon dioxide in our body to be normal, to feel normal. If you over exhale, that's one of the things that can start to trigger a little bit of lightheadedness or dizziness. So just watch for that. If you start to feel that way, go back to normal breathing. Okay, the next one on here is a two-part breath. And this is another exercise that I will use very frequently in work with people in therapy. So the two-part breath has a hand on the chest and a hand on, a belt, on the belly, that same area right at the base of your rib cage, right at the notch. And then we're going to focus on the movement at those two locations as we breathe. Watching to see where you get more movement, where does it feel easy for you to expand, or is there an area that feels a little bit more challenging to move? For some of you, you're going to feel like most of your breath is up in the chest. Um, for others, you're going to feel most of the breath in the belly and might have difficulty moving the opposite side. So once you are aware of that pattern, then see if you can focus on expanding or contracting wherever it's more difficult for you to move. And just keep that pattern of inhale, expand, draw the air in, let it fill space, exhale, contract, press out what you no longer need. drop down. The next breath we're going to put all the pieces together. I call this the three-part breath. So we're working on three different areas. The belly, that lateral expansion into the rib cage, and the lift at the very end of the breath in the chest. So this is where I like to think of a glass of water, where when you're breathing in, you're filling from the bottom of the glass through the sides up to the top. When you're exhaling, you're emptying that glass from the top to the bottom. So if that visualization helps you, you can use that as you're working on your breath. We'll start with our inhale, awareness in the belly, expanding, letting that fill up, opening out to the sides of the rib cage. Remember that expansion that we were working on. And then finally, just a slight lift in the chest. Don't lift so far or draw so much air in that you start to feel tension in the neck or the shoulders. Then you've inhaled a little bit too much. Go into your exhale, let that air empty and leave through the chest, draw the ribs in, draw the belly back. So it goes belly, rib cage, chest expand, chest drops down, ribs pull in, belly pulls back. You can also think of the three part breath like a wave. You're inhaling, the breath is waving up. You're exhaling, the breath is waving down. Okay, so the next one that we're going to work on, and feel free to change your position if you're sitting and you're not comfortable. But we're going to work on breath counting. First being a balanced breath where the inhale and the exhale are the exact same length. So I'm going to start with a count of four. Your count might be a little bit different than mine. So I'm going to go in my head, I'm saying inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. 
inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. To lengthen your breath, we can try a count of five or one more than what you were doing previously. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. So that's our balanced breath. The inhale and the exhale are matched. And then we're going to go into our next version of breath counting, which is allowing the exhale to become longer than the inhale. And this is the breath that we really use to communicate with the nervous system. When my exhale is long and slow, I'm telling the nervous system that it can calm down. It can release worry, it can release physical tension, everything is okay. So we use the same process with our breath count. You might be able to do an inhale for four and an exhale for six or eight, but try to make your exhale a little bit longer and slower than your inhale. So I'll go inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. You can change the count of that to match wherever you're at with your breathing practice today. It's going to be a little bit different than the way that I'm counting my breath and that's totally fine. The last piece on this handout that I do. So now that we've gone through a few different ways of exploring, experiencing, changing our breathing patterns, the last step is to start to bring some movements in because this is where I really start to transition people. Once you have that good handle on your breath, then we're doing movements, we're reaching, we might be doing yoga postures to incorporate the awareness of the breath and the way that it impacts the way that we're moving or the way the shape that we're bod our body is in, the way that that impacts the way that we're then able to breathe at that moment. So it goes through just some very basic movements. I'm going to swing around for these. And the first one is just a shoulder shrug. So it's an inhale to go up and an exhale to go down. We're going inhale, shoulders up, Exhale, shoulders down. An important part of this is finding your pace. You don't have to go at the same pace that I'm going, but try to work on slowing yourself down, especially if you know that you're someone who tends to rush through things. Okay, then the next one is a shoulder circle going backwards. And you split the circle in half as you're coming up and back, you're inhaling. When you're going down and around, you're exhaling. So it's inhale, up and back, exhale, down and around. Let your arms relax. And then we're going to just inhale, sweep the arms up to any level that's comfortable for your shoulders. Exhale, the arms come down. This is where it starts to get a bit more challenging to keep the arms completely coordinated. Inhale up, exhale down. One more like that, inhale up. Exhale down. Do the same thing with the arms out toward the sides. As far as you feel comfortable with your shoulders, inhale up. Exhale down. You can always shorten that movement to go halfway if your shoulders like that better. And the last 
last one is opening and closing the arms to expand the chest. Inhale, open the hands away from each other. Exhale, bring the hands toward each other. Take one more breath like that. Okay, so that's the end of just our basic sheet on breathing exercises. Really more about exploring your breath and seeing how you respond to different things. And then based on that, when you practice a certain breathing exercise and you think, well, when I was doing that one, I felt like that really helped to calm me down, to release muscle tension. And you know that that's the one that's the most effective for you. So you practice that when you're feeling good so that your nervous system gets accustomed to using that to settle. And then if you're having a period of time where you're feeling anxious or you're feeling tension or pain, whatever it is, then you're going to use that breathing exercise in that moment. Don't wait until you are feeling anxious to practice this. Practice this when you feel good, so that way you work on the skill, you get really good at it, and then you'll be able to use it as a tool when you are feeling anxious. If you wait until that period of time where you're feeling really anxious or tense or in pain, and then you try to use that breathing exercise and you haven't practiced it, it might help a little bit. It's probably better than nothing, but you haven't conditioned yourself to really use it as effectively as possible. So work on practicing these when you feel good so that you can build up that skill and then you're going to be really happy that you did so that you can use that skill when you really need it. So thank you so much for joining me for this practice. I hope these breathing exercises help you to find a greater sense of ease in your daily life.